Hi, I have a video here on graphing inequalities in two variables. In other words, if you have an inequality that has two variables, normally x and y, I'm going to show you how to graph that. But before we get to the inequalities, I want to graph that equation. So what I want you to do is I want you to push pause right now and see if you can graph that equation and then unpause it and I will show you how to graph it. All right, so the first thing that I like to do when graphing an equation like this is I like to put it into slope-intercept form because uh, then I can identify the slope of the y-intercept and that makes it faster for me to graph. We could graph it another way. We could make a t-table, plot all those points, and then connect them uh, and we'll have our graph as well. But for this one, I know that this is a linear function, so I'm going to put it into slope-intercept form. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of the 2x. Now I have negative 5y equal to negative 2x plus 15. I will finish that up by dividing by negative 5 to find out that my equation is y equals 2 fifths x minus 3. Now, like I said, I like it in slope-intercept form because now I can identify my slope, which is 2 fifths. That's my m, or my slope. And my y-intercept is right here. That's my b or my y-intercept. So now, when I graph a line like this, I start with my y-intercept, which is at negative 3. So I go down 1, 2, 3. I just found my y-intercept. And now I use my slope to go from there. Since my slope is 2 fifths, that's telling me that I can rise to and run to the right 5, up to over 5. Or I could have gone down 2 and left 5 to bring me to here, down to left 5. And now I just get out my line tool, my straight edge. If I'm using paper and pencil, I get a ruler or something straight, and I create my line. And when it's all said and done, it's right here. Put my arrows on it. And I graph my line. Now I want to look at graphing inequalities. Now, when we graph inequalities, the beginning part is not going to be really any different than graphing a line. The first thing you want to do is you want to get your inequality into, I think, slope-intercept form. You don't have to, but I think it's going to make it a little bit faster because then we can identify our y-intercept, we can identify our slope, and we're going to make that line. Okay. Part two, then. When we make the line, it's going to, I should say, the inequality is going to determine what kind of line we have, whether we have a solid line or whether we have a dashed or dotted line. So if we have a less than or equal to or greater than or equal to, that's where we're going to get the solid line. If we have a just less than or if we have a greater than, that's where we're going to get the dotted line. Um, the reason I look at that is why it's solid or why it's dashed. I go back, when we graph on the number line, if I had something like x is greater than 2, I would focus on the number 2, and then I would have an open dot, which is similar to right here. If it's dashed, it's, it's, we don't have a solid line. Okay? But if I, if I take this same inequality and I include the equals to part, then remember we shaded it in. Okay? And then that's where I look at and go, that's kind of like this. When we have that line solid or all filled in, then we have the equals to part. Tell us to include those points. So that's how I, I remember whether I should make it dashed or solid. And then last but not least, we have to check a point to determine which side of our line to shade because there's all kinds of solutions and we just have to tell the reader which points those are. So keep these three little steps in mind as we go through and graph an inequality. So we have the inequality y is less than or equal to 2x plus 1. So again, I'm going to first identify my slope because it's already in slope-intercept form. I have my m right here, and my y-intercept is right here. That's my b. So I start with my b, which is 1, y-intercept, and now my slope is 2. So from there, I'm going to rise 2, run 1 up to right one, up to right one, up to right one, until I run out of room. Or I could go down two and left one, down two, left one, down two, left one. I like to get all of these points because then when I get my straight edge out, I connect the two that are the farthest apart. And then it looks the best. It's the most accurate. For me, I can adjust mine when I'm done. Now, do I need a solid line or a dashed line? Well, I look 
I'll put my inequality symbol. And since it has the equals to part in it, that's going to tell us that we have a solid line. So I'm going to leave it solid. I am going to put the arrows on it. And since we have a blue inequality, I'll make it blue as well. And now that last part of I have to figure out which side has solutions to it. Because the line, every point on the line, yes, will be a solution to that inequality. But there's also more points. Now, the point that I always like to check is the point 0, 0. And the reason I like 0, 0 is because it's pretty easy to multiply by 0, add zeros, so on. Zeros are just easy to work with. Now, if the line goes through 0, 0, then you can't pick it. You have to pick a different point. So now it's just a matter of I'm going to take my original inequality. I'm going to plug the point 0, 0 into it. So my y value is 0. And now we have less than or equal to 2 times the x, which is 0, and then plus 1. Now, I just have to figure out, if this is, if this is true, that's going to tell me that all the points I'm going to say below the line are solutions. If it's not true, that means that all the points above the line are solutions. On my right side, I'm going to have 0 plus 1. 1 is 0 less than or equal to 1. The answer is yes, that this is a true statement. Therefore, all of the solutions, or all of these points down here, are solutions to my inequality. You know, you can pick any point. I look here and I go 1, 1. That's down here. Well, if I put 1 in for y and 1 in for x, 2 times 1 is 2 plus 1 is 3. And then I'd have 1 is less than or equal to 3. Yes, that is a solution. And I don't care which point you pick over uh, below that blue line. Every one of them will make that blue inequality true. I have another one here. Now, this one's not in slope-intercept form. So the first thing that I would do is I would get it into slope-intercept form. And to do that, I'm going to subtract 4 from both sides. And we're going to end up with 2y, negative 2y greater than negative 3x plus 4. I'm then going to divide both sides by negative 2. And I now have y is greater than 3 halves x minus 2. My slope is right here. My y-intercept is right here. And I'll graph that line. Negative 2 is here. My slope is 3 halves, so I'm going to rise 3 and run 2 to the right. Up 3, right 2. Up 3, right 2. Up 3, right 2. I can go down 3 and left 2. Down 3 and left 2. Get my straight edge out. Connect the dots. Oops. We'll put my arrows on it. We're also going to look over and notice that the inequality symbol is greater than. There's no equals to, so that's going to tell me that I need to have a dashed line. I'm going to make mine green since it started green. And there's the line for my inequality. Now I have to figure out which side of the, the line to, to shade because there's lots and lots of solutions, remember. So this time again, I'm going to pick the point 0, 0, because it's easy to work with. And I'm going to plug that into my inequality. Now, technically, it does not matter which inequality you plug it into. You can plug it into this one. You can plug it into this one. Or you can plug it into that one, since they're all equivalent inequalities. I look at it, and to me, the last one is probably the easiest one to plug it into. It looks like there's the least amount of work. So I'm going to plug it in there. So I'm going to have. My y value is 0, is greater than, that's what I'm checking, 3 halves times my x value, which is 0, and then minus 2. So 0 minus 2 is here. Left side is 0, right side is negative 2. We have a greater than symbol. Is that true or false? That is true again. Now, it doesn't always come out to be true. But if it is true, we're going to shade on the same side of the line that our test point was on. Remember, if it was false, we would shade on the other side. So since it's true, all of these points over here are solutions to that inequality. So that is the graph of that original inequality right there. 
now we have y is greater than 4. Well, technically it is in slope-intercept form, um, but when we look at this, the slope of this one is, tech, is or I shouldn't say technically, it is 0, and our y-intercept is 4. But what I'm hoping you're at the point of is knowing that when we have an equation that says y equals 4, we have a horizontal line where every value is, every y value is 4, which is right here. Now remember, do we have a solid or do we have a dashed line? There's no equals to part, so that's going to tell us that we have a dashed line. So there's the equation y equals 4 graph. Now we've got to get y is greater than 4. And again, pick a point. I'm going to pick my point that I like to pick as long as I can, and I'm going to plug that those coordinates in. So y value 0 is greater than 4. Is that true or false? Well, that one is false. False statement. And therefore, we don't shade where the test point is at. We shade on the opposite side of the line from our test point. So in this case, our inequality is going to look like that. And then I also have one here that where x is less than or equal to negative 6. Now, this one I want you to look at and go, oh, yeah. When it says x equals a number, that was a vertical line. So a vertical line at, oops, at negative 6, an x value of negative 6. So I come over here to negative 6. I make my vertical line. I'm going to put my arrows on it. I'm going to look at the inequality symbol now. It's less than or equal to. The equal to is the important part. So that means that we have to keep our line solid, just like it was to start. I change it to purple. And now we have to test that point. Again, I'm going to go back to my 0, 0. I plug 0 in for x. Is that less than or equal to negative 6? Well, that is a false statement again. So this time, since it's false again, we shade, remember, on the opposite side of our line from the test point. So that would be over here. All of these points out here are solutions to our inequality. And that's going to include, conclude my lesson on graphing inequalities in two variables.